Hello everyone. I am making this video because I have got tons and tons of emails in the last few days to send pictures of different things in my planner and everybody's curious about my system that I use. I use my planner in a system. I mean, I do the same thing every week the same exact way. Now, not to scare most of my customers, I am still paperless and I am still using my digital planner, but since I sell a paper planner now, I have to use it. So my paper planner mirrors my digital planner and I'll show you my digital planner at the end of this video for those of you that are wondering what I'm talking about. And I'm actually holding my planner kind of tilted because since everything in my planner is pretty much clear or plastic, it's I get this glare and I'm going to try really hard to keep it out of the glaring area. And, and of course it's at night in my office and so I'm going to try to do the best that I can without blinding you guys with the glare. Okay, so this is my cover of my planner. I've talked about this before in the covers. And I'll just run through this really, really quick. Okay, now I have tested pretty much every arc punch uh, gadget there is out there. Um, the Lavender, the Circas, or the Circa Lavender, I think they're the same thing. And then there is a arc punch and I found one that makes the stems the longest, but not as long as the me and my big idea pages, but it's as close as I could get. And that is, actually, let me show it to you really quick. This is the punch here, and it's the lavender punch, and it is, I bought it on Amazon. There's several different ones. I've tried them all, and I even used the ARC, but the ARC was, um, shorter stemmed and so I didn't like it much but even with that said even though I have that punch and I could punch through just about anything with it probably metal if I wanted to I still on my covers use the individual round hole punch and the reason that I do that is because I like to go in a little further I want a little bigger bite or a longer stem because I feel like it just it's just reinforces it and since it's a cover and it's something that is going to be handled more than anything in your planner I just I, I think it just really needs that that little extra so that's why I do that with my covers even though I have the the punch my discs are arc discs Lavender sells discs as well. Me and my big ideas sells discs. And um, my dream discs are the aluminum ones that from Lavender that I've been watching for almost a year now and waiting desperately for them to go on sale. I want them so bad. They're on my wish list. and But they're $29. <laughs> and um, these are like three three dollars for these so that's why I don't have the aluminum so that's it for the outside of my planner oh by the way my cover I designed my cover in Adobe Illustrator and I printed it out on just regular printer paper actually it was 33 pound paper the really bright white the real white paper um, and so that's that's where my cover came from all right, so the inside of my planner, and this is what has gotten the most attention from the inside of my planner, is these, um, my dashboard, my context dashboard. Now, I used to use the inside cover, and I would, every time, every time I had a thought, anytime anything popped into my head, I would write it down on a flag, and I would stick it on my inside cover and that was working for a little while except for 
nothing was in any kind of order. I mean, I had some color coding going on, but I didn't, I didn't have anything telling me where or when. And so if I was out running errands, I would have to look at every flag of every little note that I made to see which one of them were errands. So I came up with another system and this is kind of a paperless or a paper version of my paperless version because I already have a digital version of how I do this and so I made a paper version for this um, before I move on to that I'm just going to show you this cover that I've made it's got a snap um, I've seen many videos on YouTube on how to make these it's basically uh, one of those coupon keepers or accordion folders and all I did was cut the front to size the front that has the snap on it and punched it so here I can take it out and then I did the same thing with the back only with the back I left enough of the flap to where it wraps around and the reason that I'm wrapping it on the inside is because it's just way too slippery and flimsy for me to have, let me just snap this closed and show you what I mean, for me to have on the outside of my planner. And it serves its purpose being on the inside. I mean, now nothing's, everything's pretty secure. It's not very slippery. And um, my tabs are protected, my pens are protected, and nothing's getting crushed, nothing's falling out. If I have to go and throw this in a bag. It's I'm not worried about it. It's going to be fine in the bag. Whereas before I had some kind of protection here, it was bending pages and everything and and that that just I'm too I'm too OCD for that. So, so I keep it on the inside and when I open up my planner, usually at the beginning of the day, I tuck this in the back and I leave it like that all day. It's really if I'm going to throw it in a bag, or if I'm trucking around with it, I, I, I snap it. So, all right, so obviously I'm not using this as my dashboard anymore. I have a new system for my dashboard. I printed out the places that I am the most when I find myself accomplishing my tasks. And that's what I call the context. That is where I'm gonna be when I'm doing the, the the task so that way when I'm on the phone I can turn to the phone section and see all the calls that I need to make and possibly accomplish all of them if I need to so if I'm going to be at my computer everything that I have to do at my computer is on that one and these are only four by six cards and what I've done is I've staggered them as I've put them in I've gone down one ring that way, and, I, and of course I've labeled them at the bottom, so that way I can see them at a glance. And of course, I've got some extra ones here off to the side, and that's to do in needs and wants. So let me just tell you, my, and, and everybody's gonna be different. Everybody's contexts are gonna be different where you're gonna be. Um, if you are find yourself in your vehicle a lot because you are carpooling or something like that, you're going to have one that's probably going to say at car or, or something like that or at ball field or at the gym, whatever. But me, this is where I find myself. So this is, this is for me. This is customized for me. So your labels will be totally different. So that's what you need to do. You need to just kind of sit down and think about where do I spend most of my time doing most of the things that I need to get done? Mine is in my workroom. Um, most of you know that uh, I have a drapery workroom. I sew and fabricate for interior designers. I build window treatments, uh, cornice boards. I fabricate panels and bedding for interior designers. So I spend a lot of time in my drapery workroom, which is in my home. It's, it's kind of a little sweatshop, 500 square foot sweatshop that I sew in. And um, so I keep anything that I need to be doing in that, in that room, I keep on this card. And here you can see this kind of just like stair steps. 
this goes down. And so I have another business, those of you that know me. I also teach on my website. I teach, I'm a productivity coach and I teach everything productivity. I also make and design tools for productivity. So kind of like what you're watching right now, this is kind of a productivity uh, tool. And so I do that as well. And I also have a graphic design business. So I'm at my computer quite a bit. So I have to have one that says at computer. So when I'm at my computer, I can just flip this card over and I can see what all needs to be done at the computer. Everybody needs at phone. Everybody needs to make calls at some time or another. You have to have an at phone um, context dashboard. Everybody runs errands, so you'll need to have one of those. And I can also paper clip anything I need to bring with me on those errands, such as I need to get a refund from Target. So here is the receipt from the Target. Here's a couple things that I need at the grocery store. Um, pretty stocked up on everything else, but as I run out of things and as I think of things I need, I just kind of jot them down and stick them on here because that would be considered an errand as well. General to-dos, needs and wants. When I find that I have an extra few dollars, if ever, I compare my needs with my wants and just see which one is screaming at me the loudest. Okay, and then I have something that looks like another dashboard, I guess you could say. It's just a clear, um, it's, I actually made it out of a laminate pocket, five mil, and I put one of the me and my big idea stickers inside of it before I laminated it. And I made this when my dashboard, or when my, all these, these flags were being put here, I needed something to protect them from being peeled off or being curled up and that's where this idea came in and I just kind of fell in love with this and it also protects my sticky note dashboard and honestly as pretty as all these sticky notes are I don't use most of them um, I don't use any of them really I just use these these are the ones that I use as you can see when you look at and then I color code with my with my um, org dots and an org to me is my organizations and organizations I consider every area of my life so my personal life is an organization short org um, org for short um, my digitally speaking business my teaching business my website that is another org and um, that is pink and then my personal is green and um, I've got I've got some other colors that I use for different things. So you would also personalize your color coding to the nature of the things that you um, have going on in your life. Because like I said, everybody's different. This is just like the foundation or the, yeah, the foundation for the system, I guess you could say. This is a pen clip or um, slip that I made or loop and I made it just out of a binder clip and some elastic and a glue gun and there are videos on YouTube on how to make these and I actually keep my black erasable ink pen in there. This is my planner by the way is Printable. I needed lines and I also didn't want to have to go by any colors so I made it very minimalistic um, almost no color so that I can choose my colors as to my own free will I don't have to go by any color that's been predetermined by another planner system so I made my own planner or printable planner it's called the key life printable planner and um, the front page of it has some lines for my personal information so that if I lose it, if anybody ever picked it up, it would be it would mean nothing to them. It would be of no value to them and hopefully they, they would call one of my phone numbers or email me 
And so that personal information is located on the very front page. When you open the planner, you have 2015, 2016 at a glance. Uh, this is very important to me because I use, I, I, I actually plan a year in advance. So I already know pretty much what I'm doing in 2016. I already laid out what I could realistically accomplish in 2016 and I've broken it down into months and weeks. And so I'm all set. My goals are set for 2016 and I encourage you to adopt this system because since I'm a productivity coach and I talk to people year after year, they're hyped up by the end of their, the year during the holidays, you know, they have a couple weeks off, you know, they're going to do it all. They're going to build Rome in those two weeks. And then they go back to work at the beginning of January. And by the third week of January, all their plans are out the window. And I feel like their plans were just in their head. And as long as your plans are just something that you think that you want to do or you would like to do and, and it's only in your head, I don't think they're going to get done. I mean, a small portion of them possibly may get done, but it wasn't until I actually sat down and realistically looked at how much time I thought things were going to take me in addition with my job that I have to do 40, 50, 60 hours a week at and, you know, remodeling and upgrading to my home and things like that, that I'm doing all those projects. They're hard to do if they're just in your head, you know, you have to have some kind of a plan. And that's what this is. This is a planner, even though you're looking at a calendar and there are a lot of dated material in here. It is not called a calendar and many people have referred to this as a calendar and it's not. It doesn't take place of my calendar. I have a real live calendar on Google and it it has everything in it that reminds me and bells and whistles and bongs and dingers go off and let me know what I'm doing and when. And that, you know, I sync that, of course, with my plans. But your planner is totally different than a calendar. Even though there are calendars in your planner, don't confuse them with your calendar. You need a calendar to plan. And that's why there's a calendar in here. So, like I said, I... I plan in advance, way, way in advance. I was planning monthly and then bi-monthly and um, several months in advance. And now I've gotten it down to where my 2016 is actually planned out in advance. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, like I said, I'm a digital planner. I have a real digital, I have a planner that looks exactly like this. I can write in it with ink. I can highlight. I can put stickers sticky notes and I have different color inks and pencils and highlighters and I can do the same exact thing with my digital planner as I do with my paper planner. So I do my real planning there but my system is, is exactly the same and I sell this planner so I also use this planner. So this planner is going to mirror my, my digital planner. But just to give you an idea of the system, and like I said, everybody's is going, everybody's um, game pieces is what I call them, is going to be different than mine. Your game board's gonna be the same, but the way everything plays out is gonna be different. I call these, these templates, these calendar templates, or monthly templates, I call them my game board. And then I call my sticky flags my game pieces. And I write on them what I need to do. Where do I pull that information from? I have a master task list that I keep. And it is long and it is grueling. and But it's not in my head. And that's the beauty of it. My head is completely clear to be creative and come up with ideas and do the job that it was meant for. I dump everything 
that's in my head somewhere else so that my head is completely clear so that I can create. So what I do is I pull out my master task list and it's a mess. It is just a running list of everything that pops into my head, but it all lands in one place. So I don't have to go scavenging around looking at, for other things or sticky notes or other journals or books or anything like that. I have one list and everything lands there. And I try to color code it so that I can look how much time I'm going to devote to my digitally speaking, my everything custom, and my personal things. And so what I do is I just start writing things down on my flags. And these are my game pieces, remember. And then I start sticking them. And I start playing with them like kind of a puzzle. And I move them around and up and down. And I see you know, where I can best be suited to be doing the project that, that, that's been on my list. And as I work through that, I'm breaking things down into smaller pieces and bringing them into my months that, that are here in my planner. So this is going to be just like a very, very big overview. And, you know, it doesn't look fancy. I know there's not a lot of stickers here. There's not a lot of washi tape or anything like that. But I, I have to have a system. And once my system is in place and once I, I can take a deep breath and know that everything is planned, then I can start decorating and stickering it up. So this planner, this, this printable planner was actually finished. I made the decision to make it in February of this year because I've been digital and I didn't want my digital customers to start thinking, oh, digital's not the good way to go anymore. Um, so it took, me, it took me a few years of people begging and emailing me to make a printable planner. And when I realized that my system works regardless whether you're a digital planner or a printable planner, or whether you use a spiral notebook, or whether you use an Erin Condren or a Filofax, it doesn't matter what you use, the system is still the same. So I finally finished this after starting it in February. I finished it in July and released it in July, and so started using it, and so you don't see, I don't have a full year of 2015 here, but just as an example, you can see like the really the really big picture. Like in July, I finished 2016 Eye Planner Vertical, the 2016 Eye Planner Horizontal. Um, I'm working on, I was working on the 2016 Printable Planner back in August still. Um, it's finished finally. Had a feeling that I had to have replaced. I couldn't let it go any further. My site was renewed in September. And I had a lot, a lot of work that I had to do to it behind the scenes. Um, my day, my eye planner daily layout, that's the biggest planner that I have on my site, the one that takes the longest to make, and I'm still working on it. Um, but the sticker, I was, I planned on being done with it this month, and, and I'm still, my fingers are crossed that it will be done if I don't get thrown any curveballs. And I leave myself plenty of time for curveballs as well. Um, catching up my my QuickBooks, um, optimizing my website. I'm going to have to work on that next month because I know I'm not going to be able to do it this month. Um, reading the 2020 Diet, Dr. Phil's book. He his diet is not even really a diet. It's just a healthy way to live and think. And I'm reading through that book, and hopefully I want to be done with it by the end of November so that it's fresh in my mind during the holidays in December. So then I've got my year end, I've got to clean out my workroom, year end accounting, and, and there's a few other things in there that, that I'm gonna be doing before the end of the year, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of how to do this. So when I sit down with my 2016, I'm just gonna start putting things on sticky notes, and some of them may even get thrown away. And of course, I'll color code. If it's something to do with my business, everything custom, it's gonna go on this stick, this flag. And digitally speaking, it's gonna go on this flag and my personal will go on this. And, and I'll move them around. And some of them, yes, may have to get thrown away and left on my master list uh, for later. 
All right, so, and this is what I'll refer to as I plan out my months and break th start breaking things down. The next page in the planner, you see the perpetual. This is where I would put everything that has to do with an anniversary, a birthday, um, anything that's written in stone that, that is not changeable, that goes every year and, and doesn't change from year to year. So that's what goes there. And then there's one page, and of course you can print out as many of these as you want, but I recommend you only challenge yourself to one thing a year, whatever that may be. You may want to run every day or every week or every two or three times a week for a full year. You may want to quit smoking, which I don't smoke. Um, quit drinking, I don't know, whatever. Whatever you would want to do or not do, you challenge yourself, you put it here in the blank, and then you just start marking off and checking the days. And before you know it, you're here in November and you have, you get a bird's eye view of how successful or not successful you were with that challenge. You can, like I said, print as many of these out as you'd like, but I just recommend one challenge per year. And of course, like I said, my, this planner wasn't finished till July, so I didn't even challenge myself this year on anything. So, well, I did sort of my water intake and uh, something, you know, some vitamins and things like that. Um, I have kind of challenged myself, and I'm actually doing pretty good, and I'm tracking those on individual days. So, so yeah, I'm kind of, kind of challenged myself this year. Okay, so now we're coming to my tab top dividers. I keep lined paper, graph paper, and blank paper in my planner, and I want to get to it very, very quickly. When I need a piece of paper, depending on what kind I want, I want to get to it, and I want to get to it fast. And so I made these tab top dividers, and I made those the same way I made that, that front dashboard with laminate laminate sheets and of course I had to have a front and a back and um, I, I made a template on my silhouette to cut out these like scallop scallop tabs and I'll actually put the link to the the template if you have a silhouette that is just like the easiest way to go to cut them out you have to cut a front and a back and then inside on Inside the, the two, I sandwich them together. Inside I put a, me and my big idea sticker. And then I also put um, my heading on my tab inside as well. And then just ran it through the laminator. And I also put a sheet of copy paper on both sides so that it would kind of stay together. It does cling together very well. So I didn't have to worry about it separating, but I just felt like it was just another extra precaution putting some copy paper. And then I just fed the, it through uh, the laminator. And so that's, and then, you know, there's the divider. I, it was already cut out, so I didn't have to cut it out once it came out of the laminator, but I did have to punch it. And what I love about having these kind of dividers, I mean, this is just like my favorite divider. And they're not paper, so they'll never wear out. It won't matter how many times I take this in and out of my planner or turn the page. These aren't going to get worn out. And so I'll have these forever if I don't change my mind on my color scheme or something like that. So those are the first three tabs. And then I've got a notes tab and as you can see each each one has a sticker on it that's just kind of an inspiration decoration and they they're still clear and so like I said I've got a note section and then the next divider takes me to my days but before I go to my today let me show you one more thing that I did I took a clear pocket folder and I cut it down to the size of my planner and I took just um, uh, 
craft paper, I guess you could say. It's not cardstock. It's craft paper, and I cut a strip and folded it in half. And then I also put some HD packing tape over it and then put it in the punch. And I can't tell you how many times I've pulled this in and out of my planner without it wearing wearing out. So the stickers that I use the most, I keep in here. I've got a sticker book. I'll show you that real quick. I have a sticker book that I made, kind of the same idea. It's got the discs. And I've made a bunch of sleeves the same way with clear plastic protectors. I cut them down, put this on the side, and then put the, the HD packing tape. And so they're in there, and they're in there good. And so, and I, what's nice about having my stickers on a disc system is that it doesn't matter how many pages I need to add to this. I can always expand my disc, my discs, the more stickers I get. So that's how I keep my stickers, but the ones that I use the most I keep in here. All right, so now to my, the, the layouts, the monthly layouts. Um, one of the things that comes with the, the download for the planner printout are the tabs, and there's four to a width, so of course, you know, for 12 months you would have three layers. And what I did was I used craft paper again, and I laminated it, but before I did that, I put them through the printer and did like a grid, because I was originally gonna use this as kind of a dashboard, but I don't really need it. I've, I've got everything pretty much squared away in the beginning of my planner, or in the front of my planner. So the first page is, of course, my monthly spread. And I got this idea. This is like my template, and I move it from month to month. And I got this idea from a post on the Me and My Big Ideas uh, blog, um, using this as a template. So these are my sketch. This is my schedule, but it's very generic. And then, of course, underneath, would have the titles of the blogs, the titles of the YouTubes, the uh, name of the order that, that's going out of the workroom, things like that, the titles of the jobs that are, or the products that I'm working on. And so, you know, when this month is over, I'll tear this out and I will move it over to November. And I also like to cross out the days as they go by, just like I like to cross out the days in the beginning of my planner so that I can see you know how far we've come and how much I have left to go so I do that too and then now here we are on the weekly page and this is a vertical um, weekly spread and this is my middle divider for it and as you can see I don't I don't have a sticker on this because I want it to be clear. And that way, you know, regardless of what page I'm writing on or looking at or reading or reflecting, I can see through it and there's nothing interfering with that. So another purpose that this divider serves, which is one of the reasons that it's not a bookmark, because I tried that, it's a full page tab is regardless of what part of the week, whether it's the first part or the second part of the week I am working on, I can fold back my planner and have it in my lap, or my car, or my table, be running it around and, and rubbing it on everything. And nothing here, none of my stickers are getting partially peeled off. None of my sticky notes are getting curled back. This is just kind of a page protector. And, you know, of course, it'll be the same thing when, you know, I'm working on this side. I fold it back, and then, of course, that goes to the back side and protects everything on that side. So that's the reason that I have a full-page divider 
um, on my today page. All right, so another part of my system is kind of old school. I am an old Franklin Covey girl from way back. I've had a planner since I was in the third grade. My very first real planner that I actually spent big bucks on was a Franklin Covey. And I was so used to the time of day that I just really needed to create stickers that would allow me to keep that in my planning system. I have to have the time of day. And then I've got a to-do section down on the bottom. So basically what I do is I put, I've got two stickers that I've created that go from seven to noon and then from one to six. And in between, these banners in between, I fill in either whether you're tracking what you're eating or whether you're meal planning. You can keep your breakfast, lunch, and dinner on these, this area here. It works fabulously for me. Um, I've been doing it for ages. And I tried having these blank and, and I've, I tried using the sections for different things like um, digitally speaking, everything custom and personal. I tried that. I tried appointments, work, to do, and and everything. It just kept it. It just didn't make sense in my brain. So this way, and it, I guess it's just the kind of brain that I have. Everybody's different, and I just needed to have it like this. And now I just really feel like I have total planner peace. It, this is awesome. And it's just a little tiny strip. I can put hundreds of these on one cutout on my silhouette and print them out. And I could change the colors according to the theme of the week that I decide the color scheme for. Um, I don't do a lot of decorating as you can see, but as I start to get to the end of a day or the end of the week, then I know that, you know, where I can put stuff if I need to and, you know, just so that it's a little more pleasing to the eye. I also uh, track the weather. So when I do my weekly planning, which is usually Sunday evenings while I'm watching The Walking Dead, I will sit down with my phone and go to the app, the weather app, and I'll look at the month uh, forecast or no, the week, the weekly forecast. And I'll just put the high and the low and then my stickers, you know, for the day. If it's, I have raining stickers, I have lightning, snow, clouds, cloud and sunny, and then 100% um, sunny. So those, the clouds, we have, we're having a very pretty week actually here. Um, the nights are nice and cool and the days don't get, get too hot. And it's just really, it's like the most perfect week I just, this week is just like overwhelming me with its wonderfulness. Something else that I do, which I'm probably going to revamp the, the and design a new sticker for this. I'm keeping track of my water. Um, all I do is just put a drop of water down here and then I just, you know, scratch out how many waters I have. And then also my vitamins and medications, I have just the first letter of the vitamin or the medication here, and I cross it out as I take it. And of course you can see I'm skipping my vitamins here lately because I just feel like I'm swallowing so many pills and I can't stand it. So the vitamins, you know, don't have to be taken, but the medicine does, so. And I just cross it out as I go. So I'm trying to think, of a better, you know, design another sticker, but for the time being, this is working for me. That the system will stay the same regardless of whether the sticker changes. All right, I also cross out my days up here. I, I'm real big on needing to see, you know, how far I've come and how far I have to go. And when I start seeing just a few days left of the month, I panic because <laughs> it's like, whoa! you know, bills and everything roll in on the first and so. All right, so another thing that I do in my system, oh, and my sidebar, generally I just pull from my context dashboards up here in the front. I pull flags from there, I stick them in the sidebar, and by the end of this week, 
there should be nothing in this sidebar, nothing left, because it's either been moved to a day and, and it's finished, or it gets pulled off and brought over to the next week. So when I turn this, this week over, there should be nothing left here. Okay, another part of my system is I use a project pad. I keep it in the back of my planner in a pocket. And it's a pad that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's a the, one of the me and my big idea uh, pads. You get two of them to a pack. Seven dollars, somewhere around seven dollars. You have a fifty percent or forty percent off coupon. You get it for half that. And I find that they will last. The two pads would last the whole year. Because what you do is you break your projects down into weeks. And you list the things you're going to do with that project in the week. So, for example, this is the job that's in my workroom this week. It was actually last week's job, but I didn't quite finish it. And that's the beauty of this system is because I can pull this out of this week and bring it over to the next week if it's not finished. And I've actually left what I have this week to fabricate hoping that I can finish this one up and quickly start this one and, and get as much of this as I can this week done as well. And then my products. I'm working on some products for my digitally speaking site. And so all those are, these are project slips or project sheets and they come off a pad. I tear them off a pad. I thought about fabricating something or designing something um, with my silhouette and an illustrator, but you know what? These are so cute and they're so inexpensive and they're already punched and everything. So, you know, why reinvent the wheel? So I'm just going to use and keep using those as long as they're still available. Um, here's a blank. Here's what my week looks like before I start adding anything to it, basically. Um, I put my stickers down for the time zones and then my banners for my breakfast, lunch, and dinners. And then, of course, I think I'm going to, next week, I'm going to move these up here. And so that will, that will kind of give it more clarification that these are for meal planning, this section. All right, so that is it for the planner insert section. Um, hopefully you're getting an idea of, my system, it's very simple, it's very cut and dry, and it's the same thing. I carry over from week to week to week to week because when you do the same thing, or when you're doing things that are similar and you do them the same way every time, it just it speeds you up, it liberates you as far as there, there's no question. It's just, you know, this is this is my layout. When I sit down to plan, I know that my stickers are going here and, and these are going here and, and the weather is going here and, and there's just no, I don't have to think about it. And then as I go through the week and I'm crossing things off and putting more things down and I'm seeing, you know, little gaps, then I can start stickering it up. I can't, I can't do that before the week is over, the day is over. I just, you know, I've tried and I find myself tearing stickers out and ruining the page underneath it. All right, so that's that's what the insert looks like basically. This is the weekly and then you saw the, the month at a glance here and then how I'm using it. And then the last section in my planner is tech. And the reason that it's called tech is because this is a dashboard that I made for my mini iPad and um, since I'm recording with it right now I can't I can't show you how it works but I can show you on my big iPad so this is my iPad 4 I actually use a mini more more than anything I mean that's my main iPad um, the um, like I said, it's recording, so I'm going to have to show you how I use this dashboard with just kind of visualize that this is a much smaller iPad. And on all my iPads, I have the MagBack, and it's actually a magnet 
that sticks to the back so that you can grip your iPad and that it also magnets and I mean it's a really strong magnet and I have it on all my iPads. I can stick this to the refrigerator and it would stay there forever. Um, I could put it on the dash of my car and of course it comes with these magnet bars and so that's how I made this dashboard and what I do with my mini is I just magnet it to the bar and of course this is too big but my mini falls somewhere about down here and I close it up and that's going nowhere because this magnet is so strong so but of course the big one won't fit in there so that's what this section is for and that's why I call it tech I thought about calling it iPad but it's really my tech section I also added another pen clip because I use a stylus on my iPad and I use it just like you would use any pen, any marker, any colored pencils, any calligraphy pen, anything. I use my stylus. This is the one tool that I need and it will write in every color, every size, every medium and so when my when my iPad is in here, my stylus is also in here as well. And this dashboard was actually made from template plastic that you can get at Joann's. Uh, quilters use it to cut out their quilt shapes so that they could write, you know, or cut out their shapes over and over and over again with something real substantial, whereas like cardboard or paper would break down but if they cut their pattern out of this really heavy plastic, then um, they it'll stay the same throughout from the very first piece they cut to the very last piece they cut. So I just cut this out. I did the corners. Of course, I rounded the corners with my rounded corner tool uh, because on plastic, those corners can be pretty dangerous, pretty sharp. And then I punched it with my lavender punch, lavender, lavender punch, and that is that in a nutshell. And then lastly, I got this pocket from Staples, and I did the same thing that I do to everything else that's already delegated for a three-hole punch. I put some decorative paper on it. And then I put my HD packing tape on it, and then I put it in my punch. And that way it's nice and reinforced, and I don't have to look at the ugly three-hole punches. And I don't have to be uneven either with it. It's totally centered on my back sleeve. All right, so that is my planner, my paper planner. And I know some of you are probably wondering, digital planner. She said she'd show us that. So real quick, real, real quick, I will show you my planner on my iPad and show you how similar it is to my paper planner. And it is just, I mean, I can do everything with it that I can do with my paper planner and more. Because when I get stickers or make stickers for my iPad, I can use them over and over and over and over and over again, and I never have to remake them or repurchase them. All right, so my favorite note-taking app is GoodNotes. That is the app that I use for all my note-taking and that is where I keep my iPlanner. You can use the iPlanner in pretty much any note-taking app that allows you to annotate on a PDF, but there is an extra feature in my planners. It's um, the interactivity, and that won't work in any other app that I know of as of yet, and I've tested pretty much all of them. So GoodNotes is my app of choice. Let me go to my planner section. 
And as you can see, I have all the planners that are in my store here. And I've customized all the covers. That's one of the neat things too about my digital planner is I can customize the covers. And let me just kind of show you some of my days. So here is one where my days pretty much pretty much planned. The week's pretty much over with. I, and and as, as you can see, the layout is pretty much the same. But then I started testing. Oh, and I've got sticky notes. But then I started testing the times and and get trying to make a template for the times. And now I've got something I've actually um, made that banner same, the same way as it is on the paper planner and that's actually how I'm gonna how I'm gonna start using it so like I said you know you can put pages in between and the neat thing about the digital planner is it's interactive so you know you can you can swipe to turn the pages or and this planner is so slow. Ugh. That's why I use my mini. This planner is so slow. So here you can swipe to turn the pages. But you can also navigate the planner by pressing and holding on a tab. And then it takes you right to that month. So I was pressing and holding September. So here I am on the the month at a glance in September, and I can press and hold on the day that I want to go to, and it takes me to the week that includes that day. So you can see you can very quickly navigate the digital planner. And real quick, I'll show you how I write in my planner. Um, let's see, I'll use some orange ink, and all my ink is custom. I made it made it custom. I'll zoom in to write and I'll write Oops. and I'll write something. Let's let's go over here and write. You know, and I hear a lot about when people know that I'm a digital planner, they don't understand the concept, and I'm always getting these lectures on the, the rewards of writing and the, the way you remember things when you write things out. And, and I'm actually doing that with this planner. There isn't anything or any more that I'm getting out of a paper planner than I'm not, that I'm getting out of this this planner. I get the best of both worlds with this planner. I get to do it all. I can sit and journal till the cows come, come home in my own handwriting and in my own custom ink colors and tips as well. There's highlighters, colored pencils, crayons, markers, felt tips. You name it, you got it here. And, and you don't have to go out to the store and buy all of those tools. They're already in here for you. Um, let's see. Oh, and something else with the digital planner is you've got these custom tabs here at the top. So I, you can customize your sections to whatever you want. I've got tasks, food journal, meal planner, budget, vision boards, and then I've got an extra section. So you can put whatever you want in these sections. It could be anything at all. You can um, do personal work and, and, and home or personal work and school, you know, things like that. You don't have to do what I'm doing. So your sections would be, you know, whatever you decide that you need. So let's just go to my budget section real quick. And my budget section, I've customized the cover with a piggy bank. But as I go through it, you know, I can see my my bill tracking for the month and I also keep my checkbook registers in here um, and I also take notes when I talk to somebody 
about a bill, if a bill is paid early or paid late, or how I paid it. it. All that information is right there so that if I ever got called to the carpet about something, I could go back and I could look at my notes and see, oh no, I paid that on such and such a date and I paid it with this credit card and it was going to be applied on this day and I've got the email is sitting in my Evernote and la la la. So, um, real good way to track your expenses and your budget and your bill paying. Um, my tasks are also, I've got a section for my tasks, my food journal, and a lot of these I have created templates for. So if you browse the store, you'll see the day planner isn't the only template that's available. There are templates for everything. And I've got templates for different papers too. Uh, narrow rule, three hole punch, grid paper, blank paper, landscaped, um, portrait. So, and sticky notes are in there. So I have a lot that you can get separately to, and you can add to your planner. You could add as many pages as you want and sections to your planner. So, so that is the digital planner. I don't want to spend a whole, whole lot of time going over it because I have so many videos on my YouTube showing you how to use it, what it's all about, how cool it is, what I can do, demonstrating, um, teaching you how to install it, download it, um, ink on it. So there's no need for me to go into all of that. Just kind of giving you an idea because I mentioned it and I know that I'm going to get emails. What did you mean digital planner? What is that all about? So I'll just kind of blanket that question right now, nip it in the butt and show you what I'm talking about. So, you know, it looks very real, even though it's digital, it, it looks, it resembles a real planner. And when you write on the screen, it feels like a real planner. And I do everything with my iPad. I have got coloring books. I color with my stylus on my planner. Um, I've got puzzles. The one thing I've never done with my iPad is play games. I don't, really have any games on my iPad. I don't I don't play Angry Birds or anything like that. I'm way, way too busy to play games, but I do color. And um, because I've done so much research on it that I have heard and read that it is just really good therapy to color. And so I do. And I'm so addicted to it that every minute that I get, every free second, no matter where I am, I will open up my coloring book and start coloring on my iPad. And it's so fun because you have every tool and every color at your fingertips without having to run to the art store. All right, so that's it for this video. And I'll just end it here. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.